My message is the following. 2023 is going to be a difficult year for the world. And the silver lining can only be that we use it to transform our economies, that we accelerate change that will underpin sounder prospects for growth. And that we, the IMF, fully recognize our responsibility to be a force for good and a force we will be, all of us. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today as the Flare Network is officially live. In my opinion, the biggest and most important airdrop in crypto history has just taken place. And it is a fantastic moment for the XRP community. We heard in the introduction of this video, Chris Selena Georgieva talk about how 2023 is going to be the year of extreme pain for the world. If you thought 2022 was bad, a global recession is going to continue and it's going to be hard for the people that are struggling the most. However, in my opinion, what's also going to be happening in 2023 is positivity headed toward the XRP Army's direction. The Flare Network will be one of the most important Networks that will be used to empower retail investors to maximize their futures, their pockets, and their ability to venture towards financial freedom. However, let's be honest here. Today has been a rough day for the Flare price action. Flare's price is currently underneath five cents. And I'm going to be very honest with all of you yesterday. It was hovering around 50 cents. I was expecting it to be much, much higher than it is right now. And because of this, my Flare Network strategy has changed quite a bit. I was going to take some profits from Flare. But right now, instead, what I'm going to do is keep my Flare and delegate as much as I can. Because I believe that this network is extremely undervalued because it's being pummeled by overall macro and crypto conditions. At the exact same time, the Flare Network has left a sour taste in some XRP Army members' minds. That can't go unnoticed. They did delay the launch quite a bit to improve the quality and the technology of the network. And now, it's even better and more powerful than originally anticipated. When I see this, the price falling from the sky, I'll come out here on YouTube and tell every single one of you, Flare is extremely undervalued. It's a massive buying opportunity. And once the price settles and starts ranging, I would highly recommend that you begin accumulating especially at these rock bottom values people selling their flare tokens they're making some free money congratulations some of you may get a better entry point congratulations but for those of you that did not get a chance to participate in the flare drop for those of you looking for an entry into the flare network this is your chance congratulations to natural market forces giving you this opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. I am not sponsored. I'm not being paid by Flare Network in any way, shape or form to tell you this. I just genuinely believe that the technology is revolutionary and the utility will speak for itself once it's fully deployed. Get in while the price is high. Get in before people realize how massive this thing is. And you'll thank me later. You're welcome in advance. That being said, for those of you in my mentorship program, we will be having our community Flare Network drop-in clinic tomorrow. The email has been sent out for the webinar. And I hope to see every single one of you in there.
as we build on our Flare Network strategy. Now, as we continue, we have to remember that I stated in the beginning of this video, 2023 is going to be a rough year for the macro, a rough year for a lot of people, but a great year for XRP investors. And here, John Deaton is briefly going to explain to you why. Do, do people really believe that in the next year that we're going to get legislation that is passed by the Senate, passed by the House and signed by the President of the United States, where it gives clarity to the market? I'm not an optimist in that area, which means that this decision in the Ripple case could give us basically uh, the regula de facto regulation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, de facto regulation could very well be coming from the end of this XRP case. That, my friends, is something that Brad Garlinghouse potentially hinted at earlier this year, stating 2023 could be the year of crypto regulation. But I believe it will definitely be the year of XRP clarity. The conclusion of this case will be one of the most bullish things to have ever happened for XRP and XRP's history. And I do expect a fireworks display for it. Now, let me pivot your attention away from that specific conversation to another one. I started today's video with the IMF warning about 2023. But now, I'm going to present Jim Rickards telling you about the future of what the next generation financial system will look like. It's something I've speculated XRP will have a massive role in. And please take a listen and see if you agree. So here's a, here's a preview of the future. When I say the future, everything on the slide is already in development or working. So this is not science fiction. This is not something for the 22nd century. It's happening now. Um, basically, China and Russia are building their own cryptocurrency system. Now, when I say cryptocurrency, don't go out and buy Bitcoin. I, I don't like Bitcoin. I think it's the worst thing you could do. Uh, but they, but the world of cryptocurrencies is not limited to Bitcoin. There are actually over 2,000 cryptocurrencies, some of them quite small. But you could invent, you could come tonight with the right software, you could invent your own cryptocurrency called the, uh, the Icon Coin. Uh, but uh, the Russia and China are developing their own. Uh, what it used to be called the blockchain uh, today people call it the distributed ledger so this is distributed ledger technology uh they're developing their own coin or token it'll be heavily encrypted military grade encryption uh with their own pipes meaning their own kind of private internet and imagine an economy that looks like the following so iran um sells oil to china north korea sells weapons to iran China sells infrastructure to Russia. Russia sells weapons to China. Russians take a vacation in Turkey because it's a pretty country, uh, and so on. So you, I've just described a whole trading network, and imagine it's all done with this cryptocurrency. So all we do is keep score. And you can keep score with baseball cards, bottle caps. I mean, it doesn't have to be money to keep score. It's just a way of keeping track. Peg to the SDR, the special drawing right, and we'll talk a little bit more about that managed through a, a cryptocurrency system that's encrypted uh, and um, uh, secure. And then every now and then, once a month, once a quarter, once a year, we look at the chits and we decide who owes what to whom and we settle up in gold. And we put the gold on the plane, fly it over to the other guy, and there it is. Um, so this is a combination of a 21st cryptocurrency system with a 19th century or 5th century BC, if you like, gold system. You're combining the two, the oldest form of money and the newest form of money. Notice what's missing in everything I just described. No dollars. There's no dollar in that system. Uh, the SDR, the cryptocurrency, gold, the ledger, the trading network, all play a role, but there's no dollar in that system. That's what we're moving up towards. Now, ladies and gentlemen, isn't that so interesting? Jim Rickards talks about a cryptocurrency system but also a gold back system. And it's something I've been talking about on this channel for quite a long time. 
A repricing of gold is something that I genuinely believe will be in the cards, similar to how FDR repriced gold back in the 1930s after gold confiscation. Is that something that can happen at XRP as well? Who knows? That's only speculation, but it cannot be dismissed. Something I do have to say is that the IMF had been talking about Bretton Woods too for a long time. However, last year in December, it states that Bretton Woods too ended. China and Saudi Arabia came to an agreement where they will be pricing oil in one, ending the monopoly of the petrodollar system. And this is essentially one of the initial steps in getting off the US dollar as the world reserve currency. I believe XRP and a plethora of other assets and currencies will be on the table to try and replace that US dollar monopoly. I believe XRP could very well be the world reserve currency. And I believe 2023 is going to be the year where we begin to see these financial chess pieces in place. CBDCs will be launching at an accelerated rate. Crypto regulations will annihilate 99% of crypto while keeping the 1% that have a use case and will be part of the CBDC and financial system infrastructure. And if you don't believe me, that's okay. You're allowed to get left behind. No one's going to save you when it happens. But don't say I didn't warn you. Now to cap off this video for today, please listen to this message by Christine Lagarde, former head of the IMF, current head of the European Central Bank, tell you regulations are coming, and they're coming soon. I've warned regulations will always have been great for XRP, but horrible for most other crypto projects. And I think we're about to see exactly how that end game concludes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable bull here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Money market funds experienced acute liquidity strains. You all remember that. This reflected a structural liquidity mismatch at the heart of their operations, with them offering on-demand liquidity to investors, while at the same time investing in more illiquid assets. That is because we must contend with potentially new sources of financial stability risk. For example, one area in which the financial system is adapting to new technologies is in the so-called crypto assets and decentralized finance, DeFi. Crypto assets are exceptionally volatile and pose considerable risks to consumers. Recall, after peaking in November 21, that was just a year ago, the price of Bitcoin fell by almost 75% in one year. And only last month, we saw the chaotic, complete collapse of FTX, a crypto asset exchange once valued at $32 billion and a critical player in that field. While the impact of such episodes has been contained so far, systemic risk could easily arise from increasing interlinkages between the crypto ecosystem and the traditional financial system. Policymakers, including macroprudential authorities, must carefully consider if and how the crypto ecosystem needs to be regulated. Why do I hold XRP? Because Ripple's the chosen one to lead the new global digital payment system, and they use XRP. 
In 2013, the Federal Reserve began looking for faster payments options. Two years later, an action plan was born and a Federal Payments Task Force was created. It included one company focused on crypto, Ripple. In 2014, the World Bank and Better Than Cash Alliance, which includes the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Clinton Global Initiative, and the governments of 32 countries put out a report called The Opportunities of Digitizing Payments. One year later, the Better Than Cash Alliance featured one crypto company on their website, Ripple. Today, Better Than Cash Alliance and all other UN initiatives are focused on a single agenda, the Sustainable Development Goal for 2030. You can see the SDGs logo on Bill Gates' lapel, world-leading companies, the Better Than Cash Alliance website, and on the UN's official exchange, Exchange. What crypto is Exchange officially utilizing for their carbon credit solution? XRP. The world will move to a new international standard for exchanging electronic messages between financial institutions by 2025 called ISO 20022. Who was the first ISO 20022 member focused on distributed ledger technology? Ripple. Who's partnered with over 300 financial institutions, including Bank of America, American Express, PNC, Santander, SBI, HS, SBC, Standard Chartered Bank, Bank of England, India, Singapore, Scotland, Australia, and Indonesia, the largest banks in Japan, Canada, Egypt, the Middle East, United Arab Emirates, Thailand, Morocco, Bhutan, South Korea, Brazil, and Latin America, Ripple, who is a former employee overseeing the Federal Reserve, Ripple, a former employee overseeing the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock's Digital Asset Division, Ripple, leading Australia's CBDC effort, Ripple, who hired a former Treasury of the United States, Ripple, two former Federal Reserve attorneys to their board, Ripple, two former Clinton and Obama advisors, former Minister of Defense and Economics of Germany, former business director at Swift, former Swift board member, former CFO of PayPal, former head of the DTCC, former chief business officer at Uber, former VP of Amazon, and former SEC chair on their legal team, Ripple, who's a member of the Digital Pound Foundation, Digital Dollar Project, Digital Euro Association, Mojaloop, IMF's high level advisory board on fintech, Hyperledger Blockchain Consortium, Open Payments Coalition, Faster Payments Council, Global Payments Steering Group, Cross Border Working Group, International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications, Crypto Climate Accord, University Blockchain Initiative, World Wide Web Consortium, and a featured partner of the World Economic Forum with three members of their team directly listed on the WF website, Ripple. Now, does Ripple and XRP sound like they're going to disappear, or do they sound like they're part of a much bigger plan? You decide.